Stephen. 22 years on from the Warrington bombing, how important is it to remember the occasion? Well, I think the uh, community says it's important. That, you know, there will be a gathering here which in the earliest years were just a scattering of people, but today there's going to be many people, some visiting from over the water and activities at the Tim Perry John the Mall Peace Centre. So I think that illustrates the fact that, you know, out of Warrington has come this movement for good from the tragedy. So it's very important the community continues to commemorate um, because out of that has come the celebration of so much peacemaking. So it's very, very good. And can you believe it is 22 years? Well, absolutely. I mean, it just reminds me, it was the very first year that I arrived in Warrington that it's happened, and, and yet we, we've continued this quite naturally as a gathering and, and the various events that surround it. So um, it just goes to show that despite time, it's been very important to the community of Warrington to mark um, how we've responded to it positively, and that's recognised probably more on the island of Ireland and, and beyond those shores than, than we recognise in our own town. You know, we, we don't always realise the effect that it's had on other peoples and other communities. So, yeah. Okay, Stephen, thanks for your time. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, good morning, everybody. Uh, hope you can hear me at the back. Um, thank you ever so much for coming, as Stephen's already done whether you're family, friends, whether you're affected on the day, whether you're councillors, whether you're just concerned citizens, it's good of you to be here. It's nice for us to know people don't forget, even though it is now 22 years. And um, this is a special day. It's a special day for my family, for Jonathan Ball's family, and for Bronwyn Vickers' family, and for all of those people who were variously injured. And of course, there were many people injured, um, as well as the fatalities. In the 22 years since, we've, um, since we went through that awful time, I'm very proud to say that the charity that we set up, uh, named, in, named after the boys, has now become a hugely well-established charity which is recognised locally, regionally, nationally and internationally by many bodies, including UK governments, including the European Union and indeed other overseas bodies. And that's down to us having had a succession of first-class staff down the years, many of whom are here today, current staff, but of course we've had some who have now moved on to other things. And collectively we've built a fantastic charity, and I think it brings great pride to this town as well as to the families, because what we do, in actual fact, is nigh on unique. I don't know of any other charity that does what we do, working with victims of terrorism and working with young people who may be at risk of turning towards terrorism. So I think that's a pretty important enterprise to be engaged in, because somebody has to, it can't be government alone. And although we've got our, our good friend David Mowat here, and Nick Bent here, and politicians are also treating this seriously, government alone can't resolve these problems. So it's terribly important the work we do in Tim's and Jonathan's memories. Um, I tweeted this morning, and I'm not a, much of a tweeter, I was just saying to Nick a moment ago, but it struck me that on the day of an eclipse of the sun, it was also the day that two other sons were eclipsed, Jonathan and Tim. And, you know, I'm using kind of um, glib expressions in a way, but, you know, their light went down and went out that day too, just as the light went dark here. Ironically, on this day of all days in Warrington. Um, I found that quite symbolic. So I won't go on and on. Um, lovely to see my young grandson here, Arthur. I think he's going to lay the wreath in a moment with his grandmother, otherwise known as Wendy. <laughs> and as we've heard, Arthur is going to lay a tribute on behalf of the families. <coughs> Down here. Hold it with Nana. Here. That's lovely. Thank you, Arthur. Good boy. I don't know about the mayor, but I think Arthur needs to clap. Here. Shall Nana get it and then you carry it? Yeah. Okay.
Colin, 22 years on from that fateful day of the Warrington bombing, I think it's fair to say your original vision to keep the memory of the boys alive has been well and truly achieved. Yeah, I think you're right, Gary. I think we've done a remarkable job without trying to sound boastful. You know, like I know, that we've got a unique peace centre and I think a pretty unique charitable foundation, which is doing work which is ever more important given the state of the world today. You've done a lot of work over the last 22 years. What's the plan for the future? Well, without just sounding trite, I just want to reach further and go further. There's no question we've got a strong reputation in the North and indeed throughout the UK, I think now, and increasingly we're starting to reach into Europe. But, you know, I'd love us to have the finances and the resources that we could operate worldwide. We can't yet, although we have had international experience, but I hope that that day will come if we find enough backers who think the work we do is important to them as well as to everybody else. You've never been able to put a name and actual face to the person or people responsible for the bombing. Would it help you personally if that was ever achieved? No, I don't think it would. I mean, if it happens, it happens, and we'd have to live with that and, and deal with it then. But it's never been something we've hoped for, because I think it would present us with a set of challenges that we've never faced before. OK, Colin, we'll keep up with the good work at the Peace Centre. Thank you.